I am your moderator, but I'm, I've been told several times that I'm supposed to share uh, as far as how we run our team too. So uh, Julie and I became partners uh, about nine years ago, and we've been in the business about the same amount of time. The difference with Julie and I's team uh, when we partnered up is that Julie is working from out of state and she's been working from out of state for most of those years. She may move back or may not, we're not quite sure yet. But what took her out of state was that her mama was suffering from early dementia and she lived in Florida. So Julie and her husband um, were hoping to be able to go down there and help her mama. So then she came to me and asked me if I would take over her business and I'll just roll into right now. So any, any client from Julie's book of business, she gets 25% referral. So all of the business is on me as far as our full-time assistant marketing and such. And uh, it's went swimmingly well, but there's been a lot of details in between um, all of that uh, that we tweaked along the way. Because you always want to revisit what's working and what's not. In the nine years we've been in a partnership, Julie handing the baton, which is the client, to me uh, for the past nine years, I think we've only lost five people. Yeah, so the handoff is big, and we'll get more into that a little bit later. Um, but yeah, we're very much alike. And uh, I've been working, covering, because Julie used to take a week, a month off to go hiking. <laughs> that was her thing for the past five years before we partnered up. And I was um, her go-to friend. Um, I was actually managing in the branch um, that she was one of my brokers. So when I left management and got back into real estate, which is my first love, uh, that was about two years later that this came about. So it's been really, really awesome. And just recently we have added to our team, Brooks Glenn, who's in the back. <laughs> And Brooks is actually here with a microphone, so if anybody in the crowd wants to ask a question, please do. Okay, so there he is back there. And our full-time assistant, Katie, rock star, right on. And she's been with us for four years. Yeah. Okay, so um, was there a moment in time that you realized you couldn't do this by yourself or didn't want to go solo? Was, was there just, you know, when was that for you, Derek? Um. For me, that was when I decided to become a realtor in Las Vegas as well. Um, I just knew that basically, I saw, I saw an opportunity in Las Vegas and it was a market that I wanted to enter, but I knew that I, I can't serve my clients well in Tacoma, in Washington, um, without having some type of support. And so instead of just deciding to get coverage every time I'm gone, I mean, I'm gone, <laughs> I'm back and forth weekly, pretty much. Um, so instead of just finding coverage and hiring it out, paying for showings, I thought, why not collaborate with somebody? Why not um, basically have a teammate and we're in this together? And it's really been like a blessing for me here because I, wouldn't be able to spend the amount of time to get the Vegas market going as I uh, do if it wasn't for Jordan. So that was kind of my switch was like, all right, I have this dream to sell in two markets. How the hell am I going to do it? <laughs> and so, um, and that was it. I was like, all right, I need to give up a little to gain a lot more. Awesome. Side. He'll take the um, agent to agent conversations more so, so he'll handle those responsibilities. That's just what we've done and then it's even reversed. So when he, when he brings the client, when he brings a listing, um, he takes the lead with the, with the client itself and then I'll take the other side. That's just what we've done so far. It's worked pretty solid. And then on the buy side, um, we basically, all my past clients that are rebuying, I take that lead still. Um, he definitely helps me out on the ground. They know Jordan. We, um, he's in the buyer consult, so he understands the situation. They know him. If I'm out of town, he, he could be showing them houses, but I'm writing the offers. Um, I'm doing all the negotiating. I hope that answers the question. So for us, it's still a work in progress, and we'll get better as we go. Yeah. 
yeah, well, Derek, we're all a work in progress, are we? <laughs> you know, you better be or else you're going to die. <laughs> um, for us, uh, I covered just briefly about when the whole thing started up, people would call Julie and or email Julie, her past client base, and her strength, by the way, is systems. She was an accountant before she got into real estate. So that part of her brain was really intact and working well. And she needed systems to do this job. And she, cre she created systems way long ago. I mean, we have a binder for everything that happens in that office. Um, that was not my strength. My strength is front line. I'm a hug and loving person. And so, you know, I knew all I had to do when the handoff happened that I just needed to get in front of them. We had to create that arc right there, right? So because she was not in state, because we weren't sitting together, we had to kind of create that um, as a believable handoff and you can trust Laura. So first of all, she would just call me and let me know that she talked to so-and-so and they're thinking about selling their home. And you know, she told them that she was out of town at this time and that you know, her business partner, Laura, would be blah, blah, blah. Version. So if you're thinking about doing something like this in the future, please reach out to me. <laughs> because I hear people trying to do it and it's not working very well. For us to have only lost five clients, in nine years think about that so there is a way to do it so don't don't stumble in that just reach out and i'm happy to help you okay um how do you pay your team members assistants etc and um, do you have written agreements that are signed by all parties when you're in a partnership you should yeah so uh, we have no assistance yet um, i'm sure we will at some point um, Jordan and I have, we have written agreements, so I, th I think we used a Windermere form. I would have to ask Ann Jones. She's the one that basically did it for us. But um, so we have different splits, so, and I can get into them. I have no problem sharing, but um, so on my buy sides, I give Jordan 10% uh, of my uh, buy side deals uh, commissions. And that's to basically, um, so, cause he's gonna help me out with random tasks with random buyers and I don't worry about Okay, this one you barely you showed three houses. This one you showed seven. I don't I don't think about that. So I just do a straight ten percent um, on our listings. The ones that I bring, it's a eighty twenty split, and then on his side, it's fifty fifty. And then I do take um, a portion of his buy side commissions as well, just because I'm the managing broker in the situation. So, um, but as you can see, it's a pretty collaborative effort. Um, We'll probably adjust as things go on, but just right now, um, that's how we do it. And it's worked well, everybody, I, we had, it's funny because we had our written agreement, but then there was a little error on our first commission. And so like we, you know, we talked that through and I think open communication is just a, the number one thing you should do in a partnership like that. Um, but yeah, so it's working out and that's just how we do it and we'll adjust if necessary. Great. Mm -hmm which brings up, which most of you already know this, you know, you need to lean into what your strengths are, whether you're doing this solo or a team, right? If you know you are that front end person, your best time spent is not managing that file. And a few people brought that up today. When you can hand off your paperwork, so if you're doing this by yourself, maybe one step, I know my first step many years ago, can't believe I've been doing this 30 years. <laughs> Just laugh at it almost. Anyway, so years ago, my first hire was a transaction coordinator who got paid when I got paid. They charge a fee, you hand off the paperwork, and they manage the file. So you're not managing the file, you're the rainmaker. So that's the first like small step you can take. Or if it's marketing, maybe you love paperwork. I doubt if there's more than 10 people in this room that love that paperwork, but maybe you do. Maybe you are a paperwork person and that's comfortable for you. Um, maybe you just hire out all the marketing. So we've talked a lot about the big picture, how this can work today, but I think it's really important that if you are doing this by yourself right now, that there is a, there is a small step you can take to create more if you'd like. And everybody has their different reasons, right? So that's the one thing I really want you to take home is that not, every, not anything is gonna fit perfectly for you, but if you can take one thing from 
what we're sharing on how we're doing it differently, yay, worth our time. Okay, um, do you have written agreements between the partnership? Um, we don't. Okay. We do Okay, um, is that cost too? Cost yes. running the business? Okay. Um, okay. okay. I really want to add, I can't emphasize this enough. We get approached a lot by people who ask us about um, our business plan. And we have never questioned the money with each other. I mean, we just, we, it's 50 50. And if anything, we're like Chip and Dale sometimes. Oh, did you, you, you have held home open this weekend. I, I'll hold I'll, 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 I mean, there's a, a, we are so concerned about holding up uh, our end of the bargain that it's, the money is never something we quarrel about. We talk about how to bring our expenses down. I mean, as business women and what we need to do, but we never quarrel about the money. Cool. Uh, and you've kind of covered that yeah, a little bit. Yeah, we have written agreements, yeah. yes. And we have too. So I run the business. The business is actually my ownership at this point. Julie gets a 25% referral on all her business, and I take care of all the expenses. Okay? You with me? All right. Um, what are you currently doing in your marketing to stay in touch with your sphere on a regular basis? <laughs> Well, we, um, we like to have parties, so we have a lot of pedicure parties. <laughs> party people. We have a lot of pedicure parties. For, because, sorry, guys, but I'm in one of the best referral sources. So we hey, Ben do petties, too. <laughs> really well, and have, we're having a pedicure party on November 9th for 12 of our best referral clients. Um, we do a lot in our community. Um, it's really important to us that we want to be the scholarship fund shop in our community, so um, we see, we're fortunate to be a small town, so we get to see a lot of our clients from our downtown shopping and that sort of thing. So, um, and so that's the primary. Yeah, it's very organic. Um, we do do the parties. Uh, I will say too that, um, that we send out a newsletter like a lot of people do, but we, um, we're, we're always trying to leverage. So for example, because we both went to North Kids Up High School, um, uh, we, the scholarship is huge, and you know, it, it's sort of like that, um, I loved uh, the panel for social media uh, and how you guys were talking about being genuine and being authentic. We care a great deal about um, kids, and so when we were thinking about how we were going to help our community in a constructive way that didn't feel uh, like, oh, we're bringing you a wreath for the holidays, uh, or a pumpkin for, you know, like just something kind of canned. We decided we made a commitment like three years ago now to give um, two scholarships uh, for uh, Ruth Kinsa High School, two scholarships for Kinsa <coughs> High School for um, young uh, female uh, students who were going out to college who were had invested a tremendous amount in their community, so had stellar records for uh, volunteering. I will tell you, people notice that. Other agents notice that. And not only is it a, a beautiful kind of organic way to highlight that we are very, uh, we care about uh, our community and also we are seeing other agents also ask us questions about that and realize, oh, you know, that's something that I can do too in my own way, shape, and form. Yeah, so um, we've really just doubled down on, um, not to take away from the social market or the social media one, but basically on social media, really connecting with our people online you know, paying attention to what people are going through, um, not just other realtors and lenders, but just like, there's a lot going on out there and making sure that, you know, we're in those um, direct messages, we're in our their comments, knowing that we're here, outside of just real estate too, I think. And a lot of um, content that I produce personally is on the personal development level. And I feel like um, that's got me to, it's, it's helped me stay in contact with people um, in a different way. And I think um, just both mentally and physically getting through, you know, whatever time you're getting through. Um, and then also a lot of um, the content is based on like market market updates and um, statistics, not, you know, not talking too much about rates and things like that anymore. That's kind of like old news at this point. But um, just, just staying in front of people and saying, hey, we're here, it's a crazy market, but this is what's going on. This is what we're seeing because 
Um, it's different in every market. Uh, Las Vegas is a lot different than Tacoma. And then just directly with my sphere, um, just going back to old school methods of like CMAs. So like I used to do two CMAs a year, but like with what's going on, I bumped it up to three, even four, just so people are knowing kind of what's going on every quarter with their home. Um, and I feel like people are really appreciating that. And really it hasn't led to any sales, but it leads to referrals. So um, if there's one thing I could do over and over, it would be CMAs, because I feel like that's just the most value add you can do. Um, and it's, it's old school, but it works. Mm -hmm. um, we, as our team, we do, we still do mailers. We still do a postcard like six to eight times a year. Our marketing calendar is set before, way before the year ever starts. Um, we are working on being consistent with our monthly uh, newsletter that goes out and trying to personalize that a little bit more. Uh, so there's always, you know, a personal message, but also Matthew Gardner is attached, you know, so that they're getting some legit facts. Um, we are on Facebook quite often, more personable. Um, my, I don't have a business and a personal page. I just have a personal page, but, you know, and any of you who are on, or, or, or my friend, you know how much I love a sunset, and my Frenchie, whose name is Frankie, and food and family, and you know, every now and then there's a posting about a business-related moment. Uh, I really agree with the people who talked before about if you're in a moment, take a moment. If, it, if it's kind of calling your heart, um, take a moment and, and post that, you know? Like, this is a moment here. I was standing in front of a barn uh, a couple years ago, and it was uh, built in the 1900s, and it was a beautiful day, and it was this amazing, you know, 250-acre property. And I'm like, wow. So, you know, those are the being personable with your post and not forced, I think is really important to take home. Is there anything, we're wrapping up here, is there anything uh, that you've done a little bit different since the shift I'll add a little bit. I mean, you guys probably do it way better than we do, but um, the real estate stuff is all very similar messaging. It's all the same. We're a team, but we do take a lot of pride in our personal brands. And I think that that's important and that's okay. You are different people. So I think that, um, I think that that's something that we do a great job of. We are who we are. And so, you know, not everything non-real non-real estate stuff isn't combined i would say so the real estate stuff is combined but we take a lot of pride in our personal brands as well we did join our entire basis together when we joined and we do market everybody the same yeah nancy uh i have a quick question going back to the agreements that you have with mm -hmm. one another on a team how often are you um, reviewing those we try to do that every year we actually have contracts that were drawn up by an attorney so that there's clarity. When I was managing for six years, let me tell you the number one reason brokers came to my office. I was covering them for vacation. They haven't even spent half the time I did with this buyer. And if there's any managers in this room, you totally get, and I would say, did you have something in writing? Did you have an agreement in writing? So I'm a real big advocate about putting things in writing and revisiting it every year because you may be shifting. Life changes, right? So, you know, and the market changes, everything changes. Cost of running the business changes. So yes, you need to be reviewing those every year for sure. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else? <laughs> We're going to review ours every year, too. Yeah. Okay, so. we've run out of time. Thank you so much for your time, you guys. Okay, our next speaker, Hao Dang, a seasoned real estate expert and a proven track record in the industry. He is here to join us as he shares essential do's and don'ts to achieve peak efficiency. I got to experience this in real time yesterday. <laughs> Hopefully he will share the story. If he doesn't, I will at the end of this whole thing. But again, back to this is one of the reasons I love this event. Like how and I have talked before, but how's kind of a big deal. He's got this big business. He does all these transactions and then you get to know him and he is hilariously funny. <laughs> so open. 
and like I said, can solve a problem like none other. So he's here to share his wealth of experience and insights in how to get things done. Welcome, Howard. Hello, hello. I wanted to thank Shauna and the E3 team for putting this all together. Um, I know it takes a village to put something like this on. I remember coming to an event like this in 2013. It was a pivotal point for me, it was in Dana Point. Solo agent, didn't really have a team, still trying to figure out the business. I've been doing this since 2002, so imagine 11 years later, I'm not an overnight success. You know, this has been a process, uh, it's a journey. And so in 2013, just like all of you here, learning as much as possible, try to take a few gold nuggets. What are you gonna take home and what are you gonna execute? And hopefully I can add some value to your business. My name's Hao Deng. Um, I run a team of about 15 agents. I have one transaction coordinator, one production operations, uh, and I have three ISAs. Those are inside sales agents that actually calls and I have one social media. So I've kind of grown this a little bit. So um, a lot of people are like, hey, are you a broker? I was like, not at all. Windermere is the broker. Are you a team? Kinda. We're a team rich. Like, so I coined that about a few years ago. So we're kind of in between. We're a hybrid. So my topic is how to become efficient. One of the things I'm also going to share is how to build a recession-proof business. Just so if you can just clap. How many people love the market pre-pandemic? -pre yeah? How about during the pandemic? Everybody was making a ton of money, interest rates, 2-3%. Here's a question for all of you. Who loves the market today? And the reason why I ask that is because this is a journey. This is, you don't have an end point. We didn't sign up for real estate to just like, you know, have it be super easy. We're marketers, we're tours, we're, you can name it, right? I mean, we negotiate, we do almost everything that almost any other profession that does out there. So let me go ahead and get into the next slide. So we're gonna talk about the how-tos, the do's and don'ts on become highly efficient in your business. So I will start with my, I will start with my schedule the week before. So this is a breakdown of your hours in a week. You have 168 hours. What are you gonna do with that time? You have 40 hours at work, and that's a lie, because all of us work seven to eight days a week, is that correct? Yeah, so we're working eight days a week, we're not working 40 hours, we're probably close to like 50, 60, 70, depends on where you are in your career. Seven at the gym. If you work out or if you do hobbies, I play tennis, I do CrossFit, and I love to hike, I love to play, I love to go swimming with my kids. It's actually more than that, seven which leaves us with 56 hours sleeping, eight times seven. Now, how many people probably get eight hours? Most of us probably sleep less than that, which is not very good for our health. So that's, that's that. So which leaves us with 65 hours left. Now, how are you going to get more of your time back? And I'm gonna teach you that, how to be more efficient with your time and be intentional. I start my day Monday at six o'clock. I'm up at 5.30, hit CrossFit, six to seven. I take my kids to school every single morning. This is something we joke around, we have fun in their car. We don't play music. I ask them questions about life, about all these other things. My daughter, Daddy, can I ask you something? Absolutely, anything. Client asks, hey, how's business? Right? And kind of going off candid just a bit, is I never say I'm busy. When you say you're busy, you're never gonna get a referral. I was like, you always have time. How can I help you? I hope that's a takeaway for a lot of you. When, it, when a client comes up to you and says, hey, how's, how's business? If you say you're busy, now does that person wanna refer business to you? Most likely not. Right? But if they always have time for you, what questions do you have about the market? I guarantee you that's gonna to lead to a better conversation. So if you guys are overachievers, I actually start my day the night before. So on like Sunday, I kind of write down all the fun things I'm gonna do. Like you guys have all taken vacations before. What do you do? You plan everything and then you get super busy. I do the exact same thing so I control my schedule. So Wednesdays I play tennis at Bellevue Club at six. I swim with my kids Tuesday and Thursday. I have kid functions, I put all this stuff in my calendar. And I highly suggest that you all do that, otherwise your clients will control you. You should be able to control your time, okay? Everyone always asks, how you work a lot of hours? Honestly, I only work 25 to 30 hours a week, okay? So, you know, Fridays I take off, Sundays I take off, Saturdays by appointment. So how much time do you have left? How are you gonna get more of your time back? So we delegate and automate. So email uh, auto templates. Sounds very, very basic. Everyone should be on Office 365. Any email that requires you to write it twice, so an email to a lender, an email to an inspector, escrow, introducing to the buyer, 
All that should be auto-templated. Click one button, the auto-publish. Same thing with an offer. How many offers do you write up in a week? Three, four, five, ten? Write that down, put in the purchase price, closing date, what your contingencies are, what you're gonna waive, all that good stuff. That honestly is gonna save you so much time. Emails alone, how much time do you guys spend on emails? More than two hours, five hours a week? You've wasted almost 25% of your week already if you're doing 10 hours of email. I delegate all this out. I don't check email, I have someone monitor my email, they respond on my behalf. No different than the staff at your office. There's like four front staff, you know, people that help you out. What do they do? They use the same email and they just tag it. You know, I believe in R&D. Who knows what R&D is? That's it. Copy, I copied it to the front office. I was like, hey, we're not smart. I'm just gonna follow other people that have already done this. So I have my whole staff, or two of my staff, watch my email respond on my behalf. They organize all the emails, like earnest money, they follow with appraisers, like all that stuff. Like, I don't wanna see that stuff. Title reports, let them review it, let them put it away. You should be going out and doing what? Selling homes and building relationships, okay? We're not in a transactional business, we're in a relational business. Load your schedule up with all the people you wanna see throughout the week. Seriously, build deep roots. So let me give you an example. I had one client I haven't talked to in a while. He's actually a really good friend. I say, hey, John, how's it going? Good. Hey, we should, I haven't talked to you in like forever. What's new? He tells me, and this is part of that, you know, that, that calendar thing. And I said, uh, he's like, not much. I go, you've been playing tennis? He's like, yeah. So we go out and play tennis. Next thing you know, he's like, hey, we should do that again. Now he introduces me to six other people. We're playing dubs on two different courts. You see what I'm doing here? Old school real estate, building relationships. I have this in my calendar every single week. We play tennis Wednesday at one o'clock at Central Park. Does that kind of help a little bit? You guys can build a massive business. Don't wait for the economy to come to you. You create your own economy. Next thing, text communication. On Sunday, <laughs> it's so funny. On Sunday, I look at every appointment in my calendar and I schedule text. For those that have an Android, raise your hand if you have an Android. Very few people, everyone has an iPhone. I get it. The thing though, here's the thing though is in my calendar, let's say I'm meeting Beth, I'm meeting John, whatever, on that particular day throughout the week, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I send a, a scheduled text that morning. And I load up my calendar, I'll, I'll usually send out about 30 to 50 text messages on my phone, and they get scheduled that morning at eight o'clock. If you ever get a text from me at eight o'clock or 8.30 or nine on the dot, that's a scheduled text. I send out about 40 of those. Of those, how many people did I meet? I probably meet about 10 to 12 people a week. That's about 50 people, that's 600 a year. How much business do you think I'll get out of that? And again, this is relational, okay? Out of that 600, I guarantee I'm gonna probably get at least 60 referrals. 60 referrals, no question. Everyone knows people. MLS searches. Every time we meet someone, we set up a search immediately. We use Concierge, I don't know what you guys use. We use Concierge in a system called Ylopo. Is that, that email goes out, you know, obviously we approve it or disapprove, we don't send out garbage. And then we send it out on Thursday, Friday, again. Hi John, hey, just sent you some uh, emails. Let me know what you think of those. Schedule text next morning. Hey John, wanted to see if you got a chance to review those and do you have any availability this weekend to go see these homes? I do that every Thursday, Friday. This is how I sold 87 homes in one year, okay? CMAs for clients. We use HomeBot and Fellow. Um, so CMA, HomeBot, you guys know what that is? I'm gonna talk about Fellow. Fellow is like on steroids. That was on Saturday. I flip flop them the next day. And the reason why I did that is because everyone thought I controlled the area. I had all these listings. In fact, I didn't have any listings at all, right? And so I did four. Just be very strategic on how you guys are showing homes. That kind of uh, leads into that a little bit later. Writing and going over offers. One of the things that makes it super efficient is when we submit an offer is send a screenshot of the email that you just sent, text it to the other listing agent. A lot of times they see that, they can respond back a little bit quicker rather than calling, I mean, you call them still, but you also send the schedule, say, hey, I just sent an offer over. This way they can just see it, you talk about just saving a few more seconds, and that's what differentiates you from all the other agents out there. Uh, creating systems, we'll go into that. So my key hires. I uh, first hired a agent that would help me show, because I was just had too many clients, so help me show, help me in time inspections. I had that person shadow me as far as writing up offers. So that was my very first hire. It was like a salary of $2,000 plus bonuses. In open houses in the first 30 days, like I mentioned, we do a lot of clock opens. Uh, they do have to do three transactions before they get any How Dang King lead opportunities, which is Zillow, Homelight, Fast Expert. Like you can, new, there's like Y Local. These are all the different platforms that we get. Uh, typically we're getting, kind of jump on this, about 120 to 160 clients a month. That's what we, uh, that's how many opportunities we get. 
shadow opportunities. So anyone that comes on board, they get to shadow us from start to finish. Here's another way of getting more of your time back. So I brought on, sometimes I'll bring on an agent and they, they pick me up from my house for two hours a day. If they drove around two hours a day, times five is what, 10? You can actually get one extra work week back in a month. So you don't take any work home. So when you're, that person's driving you around, they're getting educated on the different streets, the community, the cities, all that good stuff. They're hearing all of your conversations, right? They're learning all the way. People are like, I don't want to train someone. You're not really doing anything different. This person is, that person will just be a copy of you. Make sense? So you're going to get more of your time back. Um, so that was often for two months. We role play a lot. So you can practice on clients. We don't practice on clients. We practice on each other. So we come in, we go to a fake open house or an open house or a listing that we have that's a bacon. We go through, everyone else is in the living room, just pretending like they're not saying anything. We practice amongst each other. How are you gonna get, how are you gonna get that client to contact? All of our agents are not allowed to sit down at all and really have a computer unless they're showing listings. You gotta stand there. The point of an open house is to get contacts. See who you can help, okay? Uh, we do a lot of live calls. So people are like, what is a live call? So a live call is they do an open house, they build rapport, and then I would go out on Monday or Tuesday and call the leads that came through the open house. So it'd go like this. Hi, John, how's it going? Good. Hey, you met Camp uh, Sandy at one of our open houses at 123 Main Street. Just wanted to dive a little bit deeper into your home search. So forth. You know, kind of thinking about selling. I have a house in Redmond, 600,000, blah, 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 blah. We're looking to buy a house in Kirkland for blah, 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 blah. I go, great. Love to set up a buyer strategy session with you. If you guys are not doing that, that is where we nail it. And if that is typically about 20 to 30 minutes, I do record it, I ask permission, and we use that for training purposes for all the other agents. So I dive a little bit deeper into that, I can't have that much time right now. These are different uh, CRMs that we use, or different systems. Uh, so CRM is Customer Relationship Management. We use FollowBox. The reason why we use FollowBox is it tracks all the different statuses, how many leads each agent's working, and we can see how many are in escrow, how many is closed, how much GCI they've made. It is intuitive. We can also tag like the lender, the escrow, and anyone else on there that's a collaborator. It is super robust. We use it, um, follow boss and my local. So those that have websites, does your website make you money? Our website does make us money. We close probably on average about two from our website every single month. Does it cost a lot? The answer is absolutely not. We like it because there's a, there's a two-way integration there. So how that works is someone comes to your open house, they can go back onto Redfin or back onto Zillow. What we do is we have Ylopal integrated with our follow-up so they stay within our own platform. When they're looking for homes, it's all housing team. You're not going to go anywhere else. We can see on Ylopal um, how often they looked at the house, how long they were on there, what other homes they've looked at and, and favorited everything. And we get an email of someone looks at that same house three times in a row. That means there's interest. So what our agents will do at that point, hey John, how's it going? Good. Hey, just wanted to reach out to you in regards to your home. But the thing is, you don't want to be like a stalker. You know, like, oh, I see you're looking at that home. Like, you want to go take a look at it? So um, we say, hey, it looks like you're looking at Kirkland, three beds, around like 2,000 square feet. Love to set up a search. So we set up a search, send it to him. He's like, oh, that's the one I actually wanted to go look at. We're already gonna do that already. So we also use um, some Windermere tools there. Let's talk about scheduled tax. Ring Central is a number where uh, if someone calls my sign or my number on my sign. What happens at that point is it gets a broadcast to all to the agents. I don't pick up the call. One of the other agents picks it up. Now, how many of you guys would love to put a sign on the yard that someone calls it, someone else from your team picks it up, start showing them that home or other home? No one? Okay, I guess I'm done. <laughs> the thing is like, that's how you're going to get more of your time back. The thing is a lot of us in the industry, we have a balloon and we have a string attached to us. You gotta cut that off. You know, if you want more, you want more time, you have to have less control. Purely less control. So that's how you're gonna get more of your time back. Uh, Mojo Dialer is another good way for like our inside sales agents. What they do is if we don't get an offer accepted on a home, they call the, the circumference and ask for sellers. Hey, just wanted to reach out to see if you thought about selling. We just, there's a home that just went pending right down the street from you, blah, blah, blah. So we do that for on offers, sorry, on offers that did not get accepted and on closes. Hey, by the way, hey, John, how's it going? Good. Hey, we just sold 123 Main Street. 
down the street from you. Um, just kind of curious if you're thinking about potentially selling. So we kind of get into a little spill. That's that. I'll skip the last two. So this is uh, Follow Boss. As you guys can see, I know it's super tiny, but you can see the phone number, the name, the phone number, email address, where the lead came, this one came from my local, but, and then who the agent's assigned to, which lender it's assigned to, all the different zip codes that the person's looking in. It has their link as far as uh, what's saved at the very bottom. On the top, what's really good about this is when do you last communicated with that client? So if you were to look at your old clients that you sold a home a year or two or three years ago, now, when's the last, if I were to ask, when's the last time you talked to that client? Honestly, you wouldn't even know. This is merged with Office 365 and your FUB number. So you can see when you last communicated with them. The other thing we do too on this is we tag a lot of our clients, mothers and fathers, or if they have kids, and you can actually merge the two contacts together so that like two people would be on one, which is awesome. It's called Follow Boss. Yeah, Follow Boss. I think, I'm not promoting, I don't get anything from it. I think from a single user, I think it's like $80 a month. It's great for tracking. If you don't have this, like, I, I don't know how you run your business. It's, I, it's hard because I can see all your sales and everything else. And the thing is, I'm gonna share with you over here in just a second, how this integrated with something else. You'll want to get a system of some sort. Of some sort. Sean did such a great job polling all of you. What do you want to hear? And these are questions that you want to hear. So thank you for that. I'm sure you've had moments I have had moments, maybe you haven't had them, where you wake up in the morning. I do think that I, I, I need to start each day at zero. And, and so don't rest on your laurels. Uh, I don't care if you have nine in escrow. Each day start at zero and you'll show up differently at the office. As to, ah, I think I can relax, I got nine in escrow. Um, but I'm sure you've had those moments where I haven't had nine in escrow and I'm like, I don't think I'm gonna ever sell another house. <laughs> The phone's not ringing, nobody's calling. You've had those moments, right? right. What do you do? How do you, how do you motivate yourself to keep on? <laughs> uh, great question. So, yes, there's been years that have been, well, here's what I wanna say. Not a person in this room, and I would bank all my commissions that I have, hasn't had a concern about this year. We all have. We wake up in the morning and we go, dear God, right? Or we look at our numbers or what last year we did and we're not close. And I say this to all of you that are new, is that you have to eliminate the alternative. You gotta stay committed because when you're committed, you will keep going. Find a way to do it. If I could find a way to raise four kids and get them to this college and do what I needed to do. And I remember driving my kids in a, in a van, in my Volkswagen van, putting flyers out, and one of them texted me from the back, do you think we could stop for lunch? I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> so much time for lunch? <laughs> really? Look for some goldfish in the pot. But, um, but, but my point is, is that we all, we all have been nervous. We all have been nervous. And listen, this too shall pass. So it's about put your head down, stay focused, do what you need to do, and, and keep moving. Because I'm telling you, if you stop, you're gonna get ran over. And I'm not kidding, you just, have to keep moving and you know you can ask Natalie Natalie is my youngest set of twins my daughter and um, she uh, you know she goes crazy with me in January because I wake up in January and go oh my god this is it we're coming and I panic for the whole month and she goes mom it's January 18th you know what you do in January and I just get crazy I think this is it I'm never gonna sell another house and I panic and then all this you know and then the phone rings and oh hey Ty, you know, and, and you know, and I'm out of right. town and oh, I gotta go home, we gotta go home, they're gonna they wanna you know, disaster averted. Disaster's coming, <laughs> we gotta do it. And this one woman said, well, I'm interviewing this day, this day, and this day, and I'm like, Well, I'm you know, I'm in California. And she goes, um, well, this is when we're doing it. I said, Okay, I got a solution. Natalie will meet you there, she'll do the walkthrough on the house, pull out your computer and we'll zoom. So I made sure she couldn't see the pool in <laughs> the office. And, um, and so, and so it, it all worked. And it was the first time that I started to release myself from that. I have to get back to do that. Natalie did it and it's all great. So I'm just telling you, test the waters, get support from one another. Every one of us have had that concern and that fear and um, acknowledge it. I just go, oh God, I'm And struggling. bottom line, get yourself a Natalie. Yeah, <laughs> I love my girl. So let me ask, and I'm going to ask this of you, Carmen, um, because you're so very graceful. Uh, we, 
have, face it, that we in this industry are faced with many different characters. Characters that are not necessarily favorable in our eyes, are not ethical, are not honest. Thank you very much to the agent the other day that decided to lie to me four times. How do you, how do you deal with these players out there that we have a lot of? Um, take a lot of deep breaths. <laughs> um, recognize that it's their problem, not mine. Um, but those of you who know me know that I love football. I just love football. So on Saturday and Sundays, if you want me, I'll be in front of the TV or at a football game at UW or Seahawks. <laughs> but anyway, so Deion Sanders is one of my favorite coaches now. He was a head coach for Colorado. And so when he first took the job at Colorado, there had been a lot of backlash for how he brought new players on the team because most of his players left with this new transfer portal. So he got players from the transfer portal to stack the Colorado team, and now they're doing okay. I think they're 50-50. But one of the things he said in the press, first press conference when they, when they beat um, UCF, I think that's who that was, who TCF, that um, TCU, thank you, that thank you, another football fan that lost to Georgia in the national championship last year, was all of these people who had talked about him, he remembered, and he said, I kept receipts. So. <laughs> We're like elephants, we don't forget. Uh, right? it, I have a few receipts that I've kept. Um, and there are some brokers, when I see their names on a sign and a client want to see their, a home that they've listed, you step on the gas. I become like Stevie Wonder. <laughs> you saw that? <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't recall. Um, but, you know, this is a business of, of, of having integrity, working with people who are honest, who are ethical, and if I run into, into brokers who are shady, and I know that's what I'm going to get is shadiness, I just will not have anything to do with you. I, I will get my client if they insist on having that house. I will get you that house. That's what we're supposed to do. But in the process, I know I'm going to get what I'm going to get from this broker who is, is not kind, their problem, not mine, and I don't have time to add one more thing to my couch talking to a therapist about. But it's their issue. It's not mine. I just take a lot of deep breaths, and I let it roll. Bravo. So I could ask questions all day long, but we've got to wrap it up. And so I want each of you to, what's your secret sauce? What, what, what do you want to impart in a few, a few minutes, a minute, a 30 seconds? Um, <laughs> no, to, uh, to the group. What do you want to say, Susan? Oh gosh, I think that don't do real estate if you don't love it. If yeah. you're kind of on the fence about it and you're just making yourself get up and go to work every day, it's not the right job for you. Um, I feel like I have to pinch myself every day that I get to do what I do. And I love my clients and I love my job. and I just feel so happy and lucky. So I think that's the best thing I can tell you is just do it if it makes you joyful. And definitely don't do it if it doesn't because it's a lot of stress and work and all those things. Well, you're great at it and we're blessed to have you in the industry. So mine would be customer service. I think it's a dying art, and I think when you can provide customer service, and I mean a new mat at the front door at your new listing, or you'll walk up and go, oh, it's fine, it's going to be muddy in the future. No, it's not. Get the mat out of there, put it in. And Mrs. Lauder, when I worked for her, I worked for her personally. Um, that was her main thing was customer service. Take care of people. I've been a real estate agent for a long time. I do not have a website. I don't have one. I've never had one. But people know how to find me and they find me. So I take care of people till the day I hand those keys to the new buyer, we're complete. I call my client, I thank them for my commission check. It's a joy to work for you. If there's anything else I can do for you, let me know. It's about being humble and being thankful. And if you take care of people, they will remember because they don't get a lot of customer service anymore. So when you're really great and you do your job and we have people at our office and they'll walk through my listings and they go, oh, it's been tyonized. I said, you betcha. Because, you know, I grow flowers, believe this or not. I have a vegetable garden. I grow, cut fresh flowers. And I have fresh flowers in my listings. And I go every couple days and change them. So take care of people like they were family. And you will, you will be Thank you. well taken care of. 
marvelous, and you do the best job. You're just true. Well, that's a mic drop time. Not sure if I can say anything more than that, other than the fact that love what you do and be who you are. Um, give back and learn from each other. I can't tell you the moments that I learned just this week alone from all of you, whether it's been a new broker or it's been a, a more seasoned broker. And I've found that there are times I learn a lot from newer brokers because they have a different, more you know, energetic way of looking at things that causes me to reevaluate what I'm doing. So you have to be passionate about what this business brings to you or it'll just, you know, just not be a happy business. You guys are all bill givers. Give that. This was amazing, and I can't wait to see what we create next. Couple thank yous. I do want to thank. They asked not to be thanked, but I think we would be remiss not to Matt DC and Patrick Chin. They supported this not only with logistical help uh, to be an amazing, everybody has commented at how amazing this place has been, Suncadia. You don't get to be in a place like this without writing a big check to make it happen. <laughs> they were part of that. So thank you to them and to all of the owners and managers out there that support us in a million different ways. But they had a big, big part of this. I would love for the steering committee, the ambassadors, and our core four, Shauna, Darcy, Ellie, and David Hogan, to stand up. Stand up for a well-deserved round of applause. Yes, all of you. you to stay as long as you want there is a winter storm warning at three so manage accordingly if you choose to get snowed in know it may affect uber's ability to bring you more close just saying <laughs> thank you for making this an amazing amazing event we can't wait to see you next time and with that it's a wrap Let's have Shauna Ader come up on stage, though. I think we need to do that. Shauna.